The main components of the trauma recon system are the handpiece, the lid, and the power module. An extensive range of attachments is also available. In the sterile environment of the operating theater, the following steps are involved in the pre-operative preparation with the trauma recon system. The scrub theater nurse holds the handpiece upside down, puts the sterile cover over the opening, and holds it for the circulating nurse. The circulating nurse then inserts the power module by holding it on the lever, making sure that it's properly aligned, and then firmly pushing on the power module to check that it's correctly positioned. The non-sterile nurse then removes the sterile cover. Now the power module in the handpiece is sealed by putting the lid on the handpiece. The triangle on one side and the dot on the other side must match their corresponding symbols. The lid can now be turned to the tip of the arrowhead. To completely secure the lid on the handpiece, the mode selector switch is turned to the locked position. The lid is now safely attached to the handpiece and the power module is ready to use. To fasten any attachment, turn the release sleeve clockwise, as indicated by the arrow on the sleeve, to open the coupling. Once the yellow ring around the sleeve is visible, the coupling is open and the attachment can be inserted from the front by pressing it lightly against the handpiece. The attachment automatically engages. After it is connected, gently pull on it to check that the attachment is firmly seated. The mode selector switch can be set to five different positions. The unlock position. In this position, the lid can be attached and removed. In all other positions, the lid is secured so that it cannot fall off during surgery. To turn the mode selector switch to unlock, press the safety button on the mode selector at the same time. There is no need to press the safety button to turn the selector switch to any other position. The lock position. In this position, the tool is secured and cannot be used. The drill ream mode. This mode is suitable for all rotating attachments, such as drill or ream attachments or K-wire attachments. The rotating attachments are most effective in the drill ream mode. They are much slower and less efficient in the saw mode. The saw position. This mode is designed for the sagittal saw attachment and the reciprocating saw attachment. Saw attachments should not be used in the drill ream or oscillating drill mode. Using the wrong mode will affect performance and wear. The oscillating drill position. The oscillating mode prevents tissue and nerves from becoming wrapped around the drill. Avoiding this problem can considerably improve the operating results. To remove or change attachments. Stop the tool and set the mode switch to the lock position. Tilt the attachment slightly upwards so that it does not fall off. Then hold the handpiece in one hand and with the other hand, turn the release sleeve clockwise until the attachment is released. Set the released attachment aside and insert the new attachment into the release sleeve from the front pressing it lightly against the handpiece. The attachment automatically engages. Make sure that the attachment is seated correctly by gently pulling on it. Simultaneously, press the safety button on the mode selector switch and turn it to unlock to remove the power module. Turn the lid anti-clockwise to open the handpiece and remove the lid. Then pull the power module out using the lever. Finally, insert the power module back into the battery charger. There is an information button on the power module display. After briefly pressing the information button, the LEDs for the battery charge status display or the service indicator lamp light up for about five seconds. 
When all four LEDs light up, the power module is fully charged. If three or fewer LEDs light up, the power module is not fully charged. The battery charge status may suffice, depending on how far it has charged and the nature of the surgery to be performed. It is, however, recommended that the power module is fully charged. If only the bottom LED flashes, the power module's battery is empty. If the red service indicator lamp lights up, the power module is faulty. It's blocked for further use and must be sent for repair. The power module can run a self-test. This test is started by pressing the information button for about seven seconds. When this is completed, and if the service indicator lamp does not light up, the power module can be used. If the service indicator lamp lights up, the power module is not working properly and needs to be sent for repair. Some rotating attachments are available in two speeds, drilling speed and reaming speed. The attachments are marked accordingly. Drill attachments with approximately 1,450 RPM idle speed have a blue ring and are inscribed with the word drill. Ream attachments with approximately 330 RPM idle speed have a red ring and an inscription reading ream. The screw attachment is specially coded so that it can be easily recognized. The screw attachment with approximately 330 RPM idle speed also has a red ring and an inscription reading screw. AO ASIF quick coupling. To fit the cutting tool, insert it into the attachment from the front, applying slight pressure and turning slightly. There is no need to use the attachment coupling sleeve. To remove the cutting tool, push the attachment coupling sleeve back and take the cutting tool out. Drill chucks with key. Open the jaws of the chuck with the key that has been provided, or by hand, by turning the two moving parts clockwise against each other. Insert or remove the cutting tool. Lock the chuck by turning the two moving parts anti-clockwise and tighten the chuck with the key. Drill chuck, keyless. To open the chuck, pull the coupling sleeve back and turn the front part of the attachment anti-clockwise. The sleeve is marked with an arrow and the word release. Then insert or remove the cutting tool. To lock, turn both parts of the attachment clockwise. When the tool is fitted, the coupling sleeve engages audibly with a click. Turn the coupling sleeve again to tighten the chuck. Ream attachment. To fit a cutting tool, insert it into the opening of the attachment and bring both parts together until they engage. To remove a tool, first pull back the movable ring on the attachment and then remove the tool. Screw attachment with AO ASIF quick coupling. The new screw attachment is especially designed for controlled screw insertion. To fit the screwdriver shaft, insert it into the attachment from the front, applying slight pressure and turning slightly. There is no need to use the attachment coupling sleeve. To disconnect the screwdriver shaft, push the attachment coupling sleeve back and remove the screwdriver shaft. Quick coupling for DHS, DCS triple reamers. Pull the coupling sleeve forward and then introduce or remove the cutting tool while turning slightly.
Sagittal Saw Attachment. The sagittal saw attachment features a quick coupling which can easily be opened by rotating the locking knob anti clockwise. Insert a saw blade and move it into the appropriate position. The saw blade can be locked in five different positions. Lock the saw blade coupling by tightening the fixation knob clockwise. Make sure that it's firmly tightened and that the saw blade is well fixed. To exchange the saw blade or to remove it, first lock the machine and then simply open the saw blade quick coupling by rotating the locking knob anti clockwise. Then lift and remove the saw blade. Reciprocating Saw Attachment The reciprocating saw attachment also features a quick coupling when mounting a reciprocating saw blade. Simply insert a new saw blade until the locking knob clicks back into the locking position. Then check if the saw blade is seated tightly by pulling at it while keeping it straight. To remove the saw blade, Turn the lock knob in the direction marked by the arrow until the saw blade jumps forward by about one millimeter. Now the saw blade can be removed. For sternotomies, the top for sternum can be fitted onto the reciprocating saw attachment. It can simply be placed on the saw attachment and tightened, as shown with the Allen key that has been provided. Make sure that the top for sternum is seated well. To remove it, release the screw with the Allen key and take the top for sternum from the attachment. Be aware of the fact that there's just one saw blade length, which is suitable for use with the sternum top. To change the saw blade, follow the same procedure as for the reciprocating saw attachment. Quick coupling for Kirschner wires. Turn the release sleeve clockwise, as indicated by the arrow on the sleeve, to open the coupling. Once the yellow ring around the sleeve is visible, the coupling is open and the attachment can be inserted from the front by pressing it lightly against the handpiece. To insert a Kirschner wire or guide pin, completely open the adjusting sleeve at the end of the attachment. Insert the Kirschner wire and close the adjusting sleeve until it clamps the wire. Release the adjusting sleeve with one or two clicks. The Kirschner wire is automatically lightly held in the selected position. To clamp it down, pull the tension lever against the handpiece. The Kirschner wire remains clamped as long as the lever is held. Adapter for Radiolucent Drive To insert the drill bit, pull the ring on the attachment forward and push the drill bit into the coupling as far as it can go while rotating it slightly. Push the ring on the attachment back to fix the drill bit. Check if the drill bit is seated correctly. Mount the adapter for Radiolucent Drive on the handpiece. Push the radiolucent drive as far as it will go over the adapter and rotate it into the required working position. Support the drive with your free hand. To remove, follow the same procedure in reverse. Please consult the user manual for detailed information on how to operate the radiolucent drive during surgery. Gentle care and maintenance with proper lubrication can substantially increase the reliability and life of the system components. Synthes also recommends annual servicing and inspection by the original manufacturer or its exclusive sales outlets. If not otherwise stated, 
The following reprocessing steps apply to the entire Synthes Troma Recon System product line. Remove surface soiling on the handpiece and attachments with a lint-free disposable cloth or paper towel to prepare the components for cleaning and disinfection. Before cleaning and disinfection, all attachments and instruments must be removed from the handpiece. It must be reprocessed immediately after each use. Never immerse the handpiece, lid, or attachments into an ultrasonic bath or any other liquid, as this could decrease the service life of the system. The power module should be taken out of the handpiece and charged in the Synthes Universal Battery Charger 2. Now and then wipe the power module with a cloth. The power module must not be washed, disinfected, or sterilized. Manual pre-cleaning is recommended, even if using automated cleaning and disinfection. Rinse the device under cold running tap water. Use a sponge, a soft, lint-free cloth, or a soft bristled brush to assist in removing any debris. Do not use pointed objects for cleaning. The Synthes cleaning brush should be used to clean the cannulations in the handpiece and in the attachments. Manipulate all moving parts such as the triggers, release sleeves for attachments, and the mode selector switch under cold running tap water to loosen and remove any debris. Clean the device by hand under warm running water using a pH neutral enzymatic detergent. Rinse the device thoroughly using cool to lukewarm running tap water. Use a syringe or pipette to flush the lumens and channels. Inspect the device visually. Repeat the previous steps until no visible debris remains. After the manual pre-cleaning, the device must be washed and disinfected in a mechanical procedure. Place all the articles in the specially designed tray for machine washing supplied by Synthes. Ensure that all the cannulations are placed in an upright position as shown. Please note that detergents with a pH above 11 can reduce the service life of the products. For detailed information, consult the user manual for the Trauma Recon System. The power tool and attachments should be regularly lubricated to reduce wear and ensure a long service life and smooth operation. It is recommended that the accessible moving parts of the handpiece, the lid, and attachments be lubricated with two to three drops of Synthes Special Oil, and that the oil is then distributed by moving the components. Wipe off any excess oil with a cloth. Lubricating regularly with Synthes Special Oil will reduce wear and can substantially extend the life of the product. The following individual parts must be lubricated. The handpiece and lid. Trigger shafts the release sleeve for attachments and the attachment coupling, the mode selector switch, and the safety button for the mode selector switch. All moving parts of all attachments need lubrication. To support a long service life and reduce repairs, the handpiece, lid, and attachments must be lubricated after each use. Attachments and accessories may only be lubricated with Synthes Special Oil. The connection for the power module inside the handpiece does not have to be lubricated. Neither do the inner side of the lid and the power module. After lubrication, place all the system components in the Synthes Vario case with the handpiece open. Then put the vario case in a sterilizing container. 
For sterilization, we recommend a fractionated pre-vacuum method with the following parameters. Temperature, 130 degrees Celsius. Plateau time, 5 minutes. And drying time, at least 20 minutes. The power module must not be sterilized, as this would destroy it. For detailed information, consult the user manual for the trauma recon system. Set the power switch to 1 to turn the device on. The on-off display light on the front of the device shows that it's working properly. The device is fitted with four independent charger bays. Each of them has three slots for the following batteries. For trauma recon system, for battery power line, for Colibri. Place the battery to be charged in the proper direction into the corresponding slot of an empty charger bay. Only one battery can be charged in each charger bay at a time. All charger bays can, however, be used simultaneously with any combination of battery types. Once the battery types have been identified, the charging process starts automatically. This is signaled by the yellow charger display light. On average, it takes about half an hour to charge a battery. Once the battery is fully charged, the green display light is on and the charger switches to maintenance charge. The battery can be left in the charger. Leave the charger switched on to ensure that the battery is always fully charged. If the battery is removed from the charger before the green display lights up, it will not be fully charged. For more detailed information, consult the user manual for the trauma recon system. Before cleaning the charger, it must be unplugged. Occasionally, wipe down the device with a dry cloth. If the device is very dirty, it can be cleaned with a slightly damp cloth. Dry well. Do not use solvents. Further maintenance of the charger is not required.